Welcome back, students. In a previous video, we covered how electrons can be excited or promoted from a ground state energy level up to an excited state energy level by absorbing energy, and then relax back down to a lower energy state. And as they relax, they emit that extra energy as electromagnetic radiation. We also covered how Niels Bohr along with the work of other researchers like Rydberg, have enabled us to calculate the energy of a single electron when it is in a particular energy state. And we did that as a sample problem in our last video. Moving on, we are now going to be able to calculate the energy differences between energy levels. If we can calculate the energy of an electron in one state and subtract the energy in another state, then we can calculate the energy difference. And that energy difference is the energy that is going to be emitted as electromagnetic radiation. So we will then be able to calculate the energy emitted from the atom. And then using equations that we've already learned, we can convert that energy into a frequency or wavelength for an atom. So let's move on to the next page. So, remember that energy emitted by an electron as it relaxes from a higher energy level to a lower energy level is just the difference in energy of those two states. This allows us to calculate the energy emitted when an electron cascades using a variation of the Bohr-Rydberg equation. So the delta energy, which is the change in energy, the difference in energy between two electron states, is simply the energy of the electron in its final state after it's relaxed minus the energy of the electron in its initial state before it has relaxed. And notice that this is generally the way that we calculate a delta or change in the state. It's always the final minus the initial state. So for each of these states, the energy of these states, I'm going to plug those here into brackets. So we have the final energy of the electron. So this is the relationship that we've seen before, 1 over n, and that is a subscript f. nf, meaning the final n level squared, close brackets, minus, that minus, right, final minus initial, minus, open brackets, and here's that value again, negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, times 1 over, and now this is n and sub i for initial n value squared. So this is the form of the equation that I want you to use because it is very obvious that we are talking about in a final condition minus an initial condition. And this is a more intuitive form of this Bohr-Rydberg equation. Before we go on and actually use this equation, I do want to point out to you, though, that you may see this equation written in a different form. You notice that this term right here, negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, is in both of these brackets. And I could factor that out to simplify this equation. But I want to leave it in this form because I want to emphasize that we, are, we have a final condition minus an initial condition. Okay. Now when we do this, it's very important to make sure that you keep, tra keep track of these negative signs. Notice that there's one, two, three, four, five of these negative signs. And that we keep track of the parentheses and the brackets so that we don't have a calculation error. So that brings us to our first sample problem. Example A, calculate the energy change. So energy change, another way of saying energy change is the delta E, the change in energy. In a hydrogen atom, when an electron cascades, that means it's falling from a higher to a lower level or relaxing, from an n equals 4 to an n equals 2 energy state. And this is very important. One of the most common mistakes that students make when they are doing this problem is that they mix up the final and the initial values. If an electron is cascading or relaxing, 
then the final value is going to be a lower number than the initial. It would be different if we were talking about an electron promotion process. So in the equation, it asks for the n final in this first term and the n initial in the second term. But beware, sometimes in the problem, they are not given to you in that order. In this case, it says it cascades from n equals 4. So that's its n initial state. 2 and n equals 2 energy state. So there's my final right there. So notice that for the relaxation, the cascade, the final n value is a lower number. So the final value in this case is the 2. The initial n value is the 4. So be very careful when you do this. You have to think twice before you put in the n values. So with that in mind, I'd like for you to go ahead and do that uh, sample problem. Pause the video, do that work, and when you're done, Resume the video and I'll work through it with you. Okay, coming back to this video, we're going to work through this problem. We know that this is an electron relaxation, so I'm going to use the general form of this equation first and then plug in values. So I know that's delta E, the change in energy in this relaxation event, equals a negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, 1 over, and we know it is in final squared. So what is my final? It is not that one, it is this one, 2 squared. And there's my first bracket, there's my final energy. Minus my initial energy, which is a negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, 1 divided by n initial. The n initial is 4, so 4 squared. And there we go. Resolving some of the math here, just so that we can see which numbers we're working with, negative 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, that's resolving that math here, minus negative 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. The reason that I've done it this way and resolved the math within each bracket instead of plugging it all into my calculator all at once is twofold. The first reason is I want you to see these, what these numbers are in case you are having a math problem. So that if you get to the end of this problem and you don't get the same answer that I do, you can go back and solve the problem in pieces the way that I've done here and see if any of your numbers within the brackets are correct. The other reason that I do this is because I learned a long time ago that no matter how much experience or how well I know how to do this problem, it is still possible for me to have a calculator error where I drop a parenthesis or put the bracket in the wrong side, in the wrong place or whatever. So by doing the equation in stages, resolving these problems and not having to worry about inputting nested parentheses and all that into my calculator, that's one less error that I'm likely to make. So there we go. There are, those are our two values from the final energy of the electron when it's in the n equals 2 energy state minus the initial energy of the electron when it was in the n equals 4 energy state or energy level. Now I'm going to resolve those numbers. Negative 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, a couple of quick questions here. Does it make sense that this is a negative value? Yes, it does, but not because we're talking about the energy of an electron anymore. You may recall that an energy of an electron is given in negative values. But remember, this is no longer the energy of an electron. The answer to this question is not talking about what the energy of an electron is anymore. 
we are now talking about what was the energy change for the atom. That is, what was the energy change when that electron cascaded? So this is not the energy of the electron anymore. It's the change in energy of that electron, and therefore for the atom that in which that electron resides. Does it make sense that the change is a negative value? Yes, because it's a relaxation event. It had a higher energy, up at n equals 4, and a lower energy when it was n equals 2. It lost energy. So if we're talking about the change in the atom, where the electron is, then the change in energy should be a negative value because that is the overall energy for the atom, and the atom has lost energy, so its change in energy should be a negative value. Does it make sense that it is a very, very, very small number, as we can see by this negative 19 exponent? Yes, because it's just the change in a single atom when a single electron relaxes from the n equals 4 to the n equals 2 state. So this should not be a positive value, that should not be a positive value. Do the units of joules make sense? Yes, because this is a change in energy, and we're going to reflect it in joules. Answering a couple of these questions down here, what is the sign of the energy change for the atom? Well, the atom has lost energy, and indeed, the change in energy is a negative value. So it's a negative. So I want you to think now a little bit about if this energy that was lost from this atom is now emitted out into the universe, what would be the sign of the energy that is then emitted? Well, it should be the opposite sign of whatever the change in the atom was. It should be a positive value. Well, let's explain this in, in terms that may be a little bit more intuitive. Let's say for a moment that I were to give you $10. Now, it's not going to happen, but for the moment, let's just imagine that I were to give you $10. What would be the sign for my change in money, for my personal change in money? It would be a negative value. It would be negative 10. But since I have given that $10 out into the universe to be collected by you, uh, by emitting that money, what sign would that value be that is now emitted. I have given off, I've given off a positive $10. So I lose $10 and you gain $10. And this touches on a concept that we're going to be dealing with more when we get into thermodynamics, where we talk about the difference between the system and the surroundings. If the system loses energy, and the system is the hydrogen atom in this case, then the change in energy for the system, for the atom, is a negative value. But the surroundings surrounding that atom gains a positive amount of that energy. Why is this the case? Because energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if the, if the atom loses energy, then the rest of the universe, the surroundings, must have gained that energy. Okay? So we're going to be very careful about looking for terms like emitted and when it says energy change, we're going to be looking for what it's talking about. Is it the energy change for the atom? Is it the energy change for the surroundings and so forth? Up here, we calculated an energy change for the atom. It's a negative value because the atom lost energy. And when it lost energy, that energy went out into the surrounding universe as a positive amount of this energy. And then that positive amount of energy could be used to calculate the wavelength and frequency of the energy that was given off. So I've got a couple of practice problems down here for you. I would like for you to work on these. They're fairly straightforward, but they will require you to use some of the equations that we've used before. So it says, given the answer in example A, the answer in example A was that the atom lost energy. The atom's change in energy was a negative 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So given that information, what is the wavelength of the light that is emitted in nanometers? So I want you to think about what that term emitted means in this context. And what does that mean that we need to do to that value before we treat it as the energy that is emitted? Next, you're going to have to go from the energy to the frequency. 
and then from the frequency to the wavelength. And then once you've got the wavelength in meters, you will have to convert to nanometers. So three or four steps in this problem, right? And then finally, example problem C says, is that light visible? How do we know if it's visible? That's if it falls in the visible spectrum. So when, once you get the wavelength in nanometers, you can answer that question if the light is visible. And if so, approximately what color it is. And if it's not visible, which region of the electromagnetic spectrum does it occur? So you can look back at our notes at the chart of the electromagnetic spectrum I provided and then answer that question. So answer both of these questions, do that work, pause the video and then resume when you're done and I'll work through it with you. Okay, coming back from pausing the video, we're going to work through these two problems. So, what is the wavelength of the light emitted in nanometers? I am given the change in energy for an atom. It is a negative value because the atom lost energy during this relaxation event. But if that was the energy change for the atom, then the energy that was emitted was the positive value of that. So I'm just going to take that number and I'm going to turn it into a positive value. And now I'm going to say the energy of the light, of the EM radiation, equals the positive of that value. It's 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now we've done this the rest of the problem before. We convert from energy to frequency and then frequency to wavelength and then wavelength in meters to nanometers. So that's what I'm going to do here. Energy equals h nu. h is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Frequency is, oops, we don't have frequency. We don't have frequency, so I don't want to do that yet. That's not the way that we're going to approach this. So I have to rearrange this equation. Because I do know what Planck's constant is, and I do know the energy, I'm solving for frequency, right? So let's do that. E over equals frequency. So I'm solving for frequency. All right, energy over Planck's constant equals frequency. So I have the energy, that's right here. Planck's constant. Joules will cancel and I'll get inverse seconds, which I should for frequency, equals 6.17 times 10 to the 14th. And the units are inverse seconds. Now you may start to recognize that frequencies in the general range of something times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds, that's about where the visible spectrum is. So this may be a visible wavelength that's being given off. Let me calculate the wavelength out of this frequency. So let's just separate the math. I've got my frequency, now I want to calculate the wavelength. C equals lambda nu. I'm going to solve for lambda, so C over nu. The frequency is lambda, the wavelength. And I plug in these values. C Constant for the speed of light in a vacuum, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second over frequency, I calculated it right over here, 6.17 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. The inverse seconds will cancel and I'll end up with meters, which is good because this is a wavelength. So I should be getting a length out of this. So if I do that math, equals 4.86 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. Well, that is a wavelength. It's a valid wavelength. It's in meters. But the problem specifically asked for nanometers. So I need to do one more conversion step, converting from meters to nanometers. And we're going to multiply it by the conversion factor, 1 meter is 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers, and we get 486 nanometers. All right, 486 nanometers. So let's answer this other question. 
Is the light visible? It is a 486 nanometer wavelength of light. Is that visible? Well, it does fall within the visible range of the spectrum. So that's between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. So yes, it's visible. If it's visible, if so, what color is it? Well, 400 is violet. So this is probably around the blue region of the spectrum. So it's blue or some shade of blue. Well, I want you to take note of this number, 486 nanometers. In an earlier video, if you'll remember, I told you that there were these four spectral lines that were visible in the hydrogen line spectrum. And look at that, from n equals 4 to n equals 2, n equals 4 to n equals 2. That right there is the transition that we just calculated, from the n equals 4 to the n equals 2. And the energy gap between n equals 4 and n equals 2 equals an amount of energy that when the electron relaxes, it will give off that energy as light of this frequency and this wavelength. And yes, it is visible. It's one of those four visible lines in the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. So this is how we calculate the difference in energy between two different electron levels. And once we calculate the difference in energy for the atom, once this electron cascades, and we get the energy change for the atom, we can then change that into a positive value. And that positive value of energy is the amount of energy that is then emitted out into the universe from the atom. We can then convert that energy into a frequency and convert that frequency into a wavelength. And if we need to further, we can convert that wavelength from meters into nanometers if asked. And we can see that the energy change in an atom when an electron relaxes or cascades results in electromagnetic radiation being given off that is sometimes visible.